Roger. I'm a big believer in infrastructure as code. All settings for my system should be in files that are checked into source control. Yeah, that way you always know what's running in your production environment. Many developers use Terraform for that. Right, but Terraform is not right for everyone. I've heard that we can do declarative deployments in Cloud Run without Terraform. We sure can. Let's take a closer look. The first thing we'll need is somewhere to store our application image. For that, we can use Artifact Registry. And this is similar to Container Registry, right? Yeah, Artifact Registry provides a single location for storing and managing different Docker container images. It's like Container Registry, except with a couple of extra bells and whistles. All right, uh, let me set it up now in my project. Uh, from the navigation under CICD, I find Artifact Registry. I'll click on Create Repository. I'll give it a name, my serverless app. I'll choose Docker. I'll choose Region, US Central 1. And I click Create. Once that's done, we can submit the first build of our application. Now, regular viewers will be familiar with the command I have here in buildcontainer.sh. Uh, gcloud builds submit. And this part of the URL here means that the built container goes into the artifact registry. Now that it's finished, we can head over to the Cloud Console and see our build. And there it is. Let's add a tag to it to make it easier to reference later on. All right, next, let's deploy it to Cloud Run. And once again, this is a familiar command, gcloud run deploy. Let's see what that looks like in the console. If you click the service on this list, you can see the progress. Click the revisions tab for more info on the revision that's currently being created. It's all done. Let's see if it's up and running. Hello, London. It's working, Roger. I see that our service here has one revision. There can be many. Uh, what exactly is a revision, Roger? Well, when you deploy a new container image to Cloud Run, or change the configuration of an existing service, an immutable revision is created. The revision includes what container image the service should use and any configurations that you specify, like defining values for your service's environment variables. Funny you should say that, Roger. Uh, the Cloud Run service we deployed does display the value of the city environment variable. And here it is in the code. And that's what we saw a minute ago when we hit the services URL. Now, I'll change it in the Cloud Console. I'll click Edit and Deploy a New Version. Then scroll down to the environment variables. I'll change the city variable here uh, to Munich. And I'll hit Deploy. And there it goes. It's deploying a new revision. The revision name by default will be auto-generated and start with the service name. Once it's finished deploying, 100% of our traffic will be directed towards the latest revision. I see. Now, that was pretty easy, but it doesn't seem very practical if I wanted to automate this process when I make updates to my application. That's right. That's where Cloud Run YAML configuration can come in handy. Let's jump back into our code. By using a YAML file for our configuration, it lets us manage our Cloud Run service declaratively. Declaratively? Uh -huh. That sounds like infrastructure as code. Yep. So instead of making lots of manual changes, the YAML file just describes what the service should look like. Aha, uh -huh. but I've heard that some folks use Terraform for that. It's the same idea. If you're using Terraform, stick with that. If not, this could do the trick. Right. Uh, I shot a few Terraform videos. I'll include the links to them below. Uh, but regardless of whether I'm using Terraform or this YAML, the idea is that we can check this file into source control, right? Yeah, and that's always much better than having it in a bash script sitting on a workstation under your desk. This is a very basic YAML configuration for a Cloud Run service. And it will work just fine if we wanted to deploy a new service. Since we've already deployed our service, let's retrieve the existing YAML for it. I sent you the command to do that. Did you get it? Uh, all right, uh, running it now. Looks like I got a YAML file here. Uh, let's open it. As you can see, it's a little more than just a basic file that we just looked at. Check out image under the spec section. That's the container image for our current revision. And remember that environment variable we updated? That's there in the spec section under env. 
So what would I have to do here to say hello to Sydney instead? Easy. Just update the value to Sydney. But since we're changing that value, it's going to be a new revision. So we'll need a new revision name. Ah, and what kind of a name should I use for this new revision? Well, it can be anything, but remember, it has to start with the service name. We can also leave that line out, and Cloud Run will generate a revision name for us. If there are no changes to the configuration, though, it won't create a new revision. OK, I will take that line out and let Google pick a name for the next revision. Now, how do I use this YAML file to update my Cloud Run service? The command you'll use is gcloud run services replace, followed by the YAML file that you're going to use. This is a different command than the one we use to deploy a Cloud Run service. Got it. Uh, I wrote that up in a shell script here. Running it now. It finished applying the YAML. Uh, I'll go to the services URL here. And it says, hello, Sydney, just like we expect. We didn't deploy any new code, but we did deploy new settings, a value for the environment variable. Revisions are immutable, so if either code or settings change, we get a new revision. Hey, I noticed that 100% of our traffic is being sent to our latest revision here. I know I can change my traffic settings here in the console. Uh, how about in my YAML file? You can do that by adding a couple of lines. First, you'll need the name of the revisions that you'll want to use. Then in the YAML configuration, we'll add an entry to the traffic block. OK, I'll make this a 2080 split between our latest revision, Hello Sydney, and the revision before that, Hello Munich. And this is useful if I want to make a canary release. Only some of my users will get the latest new Hello Sydney version. And if there's a bug, not all of my users are exposed to it. That's exactly right. Now, if that looks right to you, we can deploy the update the same way we did before with gcloud run services replace. And there it is. Now our traffic is split between this latest revision and the previous one. And if I refresh the page in my browser here, I will see Hello Munich most of the time and Hello Sydney some of the time. So let's say this canary release, Hello Sydney, contained a bug and we want to roll back so our users get the old Hello Munich version 100% of the time. How would we do that? We can do that two ways. First, we can simply update the traffic section so that 0% is going to our broken revision. Or we can rerun gcloud run replace with a YAML that excludes the traffic split and deploys our earlier revision. OK, I will update the traffic split here. Instead of 2080, I will make it 0, 100. And then I'll run it again. Very good. Now, let's check if it worked. Uh, yep. If I refresh my browser window here, I, I get Hello Munich every time. All right, Roger. So far, we've only updated the configuration for our Cloud Run service, not the actual code. Let's say I want the service to say Bonjour, city name, instead, like this. What would the YAML look like for deploying this new code? First, you would need to build the new container image. All right. I'm running gcloud build submit now. Now that we have a new build, we should go to the artifact registry and check it out. There's our new build. It's tagged latest and created just now. In order to reference this build, we can use the latest tag that it already has or give it a new tag and use that. OK, so we can update our deployment by updating the container image URL to include that tag. Exactly. We'll update the YAML file again, except this time updating the line for image name under the template spec. There, you'll include the tag for the new build. Another alternative is to use images shot to the six digest instead of the tag. That's another way to reference a particular build. Is there anything else we should change in this YAML file? Before we deploy this change, we should also adjust the traffic again. With this change, a new revision will be created. So the revision indicated by latest revision will change to bonjour. Ah, right. Uh, I will delete this. Uh, so the new version get 100% of the traffic. And next, I'll apply the YAML. Looks good. 
Now we've checked out the console again, we'll have 100% of traffic going to our newest revision that we just deployed. And it's working great. Uh, we've seen how YAML files can be used to describe and deploy Cloud Run services. To recap, why is that useful, Roger? If you keep that YAML file in source control, you always know what the latest settings are for your service, and you can rerun them at any time. When things change and you deploy a new revision of your Cloud Run service, you update the YAML file in your repo. It's very clear what it's currently running in your production environment. Very nice, Roger. Let's say someone watching this video wants to start using declarative Cloud Run deployments with YAML. Where would they start? Check out the source repo for this episode. If you already have a Cloud Run service, you can just run gcloud run services describe, and that will give you the current configuration in YAML. Thank you for guiding us through this, Roger. And thank you, everyone, for watching. You will find links to the code we talked about in the show notes. If you have any questions for Roger or me, or suggestions for future serverless topics, please enter them in the comments below. We read every single comment. Until next time. <laughs>